Hey guys, Attic Cyclist here with the exciting day here. It's NBD, new bike day here. And I just wanted to get this uh, final build here on the channel. And uh, kind of excited here to kind of walk through the uh, bike here and talk about some of the uh, upgrades that I made and some of the decisions I made and why I made them and, and how much this build cost here. So uh, the exciting news here is that you are looking at a, a frame up build. Uh, I was able to source some parts here and the the objective was to get a build close to 7,000 uh, considering that a pro build from Specialized on their SL8s is about nine retail, uh, which comes with the CL uh, version of the wheels. Um, and, uh, you know, it comes also, I think now they come with the 4i power meter, but basically the, uh, the frame itself just comes with the standard Shimano bottom bracket uh, and the CL wheels. But uh, here, here's where this bike's gonna differ here. So we're gonna kind of break down uh, what I paid for some of the stuff, not everything, but some of the stuff here. So uh, exciting to share here that this bike call all in, out the door, and that includes any um, shipping that I paid. I didn't pay sales tax on too many pieces here, uh, but all in this cost me $7,165 here for a bike that weighed in at 15.8 pounds or 7.16 kilograms, which which is I think is really, really great considering you know the the, the weight per, for the price that I paid here, but I was able to get my hands on a few different things. And if you are patient enough and do some searching, uh, you will be able to build your Tarmac SL8, uh, you know, below that $8,000 mark if you're able to source uh, some parts out either on Facebook Marketplace um, or some wholesale sites or some international sites, which I use for some parts, which we'll get into here. So uh, first and foremost, obviously I got this frame from a friend of mine. Uh, the frame was uh, an order that somebody else placed and uh, did not go through. Uh, so Grant reached out to me and uh, we made a deal here on this frame that uh, was in his possession and unfortunately was not uh, given to the person that originally had purchased it. Um, but here I am, it kind of fell on my lap, but I wasn't going to pass pass up on that. So uh, he helped me out on the frame here. Uh, the Rover Repeat Bars I got from a friend of mine, which uh, I paid $400. These are 600 and change bars plus tax and, and whatnot. Um, these were takeoff from his S-Works because they had a 100 mil stem and he ended up going with 115 mil. So these are 40 centimeters wide and 100 mil stem here. Don't mind the stack. I plan on going a little bit lower here. Just wanted to get my bike over to the fitter with myself uh, so we can reduce some of the spacers, but I wanted to make sure we had all of the available spacers here just so um, we can have a good starting point and then work our way down. Uh, you can't work your way back up once you make that commitment. So now that I said that, um, I ended up getting a ceramic speed bottom bracket from Bike In, which is a international company that they are in Spain and the Netherlands. Um, I paid $220 shipped to my front door. It took about a week and a half uh, from Spain. And uh, so that's obviously severely discounted compared to what you pay here in the States. Um, the Supercast bar tape, again, nothing crazy, 40 bucks. Amazon had a sale, um, so I got that for 40 bucks. I got a Frames and Gear direct mount hanger, which I think complements the, uh, the obviously Shimano system here. I always run direct mount hangers. I just feel like the, the shifting's a little bit more crispy, uh, and it's in, like this nice gray to kind of match the specialized metallic paint here. Again, you're not really going to get the metallic paint here on lighting because they're not outside, but you get the idea. And it does account for some clean cable running here through the actual direct mount uh, instead of just swinging around and kind of like dangling in no man's land. Um, the Robo CLX two wheels. So I got these on Facebook Marketplace, uh, Facebook Marketplace, sorry. And I paid 1500 bucks to my front door. I found it was a guy that was in Connecticut that was uh, moving to Utah and felt that he just wanted his Alpinist wheels and didn't feel the need he needed to bring these these uh, these heavy hitter aero wheels. So um, scored their 2024 wheels, came off as 2024 S-Works, and uh, I picked them up for 1500 bucks. They're like literally brand new condition. I mean, I really couldn't have been happier with scoring such an awesome wheel, uh, being that these are the ceramic version with the ceramic free hub. Uh, so that was a huge, huge win here. Uh, I ended up getting a Dura-Ace cassette for $240 from uh, Euro Bike Parts, Dom over there is really great. No sales tax, free shipping, uh, no sales tax out of state, uh, which is Illinois. So we're, we scored there. Um, I got a K-Edge chain catcher from Amazon. That was also on sale. That was another 30 bucks. 
Uh, not pictured here because my uh, another crank arm was sent out to Four Eyes, but Four Eyes helped me out with a uh, discount. So I paid $295 for overnight shipping um, for my arm to get to uh, Calgary, Canada and vice versa. And uh, so $295 for a left sided power meter that is uh, currently being installed. So that was a huge win. Um, and the Altegra DI2 group set, uh, which is basically kind of what you're looking at here. Um, I got that for $1,490 from uh, Euro Bike Parts. Again, Dom over there is, is awesome. And I highly recommend you guys go and check out his site if you're going to be building a bike from scratch. Um, you know, really, really great pricing, really, really great service. And I can't speak highly enough from, of them to, uh, to put this together for me. What's nice with Euro Bike Parts is that you get to mix match stuff. If you wanted to get a, a, a Altegra group set and you wanted to upgrade to other calibers or to you know the derailleur i'm sorry the um the cassette or derailleur or shifters you can mismatch parts there and then the uh, site does all the calculations pluses and minuses relative to the base group set uh price so that was huge and um you know i didn't these are these are pedals that i had these are the dura ace 9200 uh with four millimeter uh spindle extensions which are a factory but i always run a little bit wider q factor i'm a little bit bigger guy here so uh, that's that. I also had this SLE SLR Boost Kit Carbonio, um, so that was really nice that I didn't have to spend this kind of money on a saddle. This is a $400 saddle that I had um, in my inventory here, so I didn't have to pay for that. Although if you can add that to the bike value, yes, we are over 73, 7400. Um, but again, I had that, so this is again I'm going with what I've spent out of pocket, um, and then I spent a good three hours with a friend of mine doing a custom paint protection film. You can kind of see that it starts kind of like right here, right above the specialized. And you can see it kind of bring down here. So I covered the sides in case any rocks or stones are, are thrown at me from other, other riders' wheels around me. We did the fork. You can see we did a nice little outline here. We brought that all the way down. Ends right here. We wrapped it around the front so there's not gonna be any rock chips in the front here. We also did the chain stays. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but basically it ends right here. We looped it around where the DI2 table comes around and comes around here. And the same thing for obviously the non-drive side. So I'm um, super stoked to get on this bike. I did get a chance to uh, give it a quick spin around the neighborhood. It was a little tight on time and daylight. Uh, I can definitely tell you that it definitely, it's, it feels like it's gonna be fast. You know, it's definitely gonna be very responsive. It's going to be pretty snappy and, and, and agile. Um, can't speak to anything else, so you'll have to wait for the ride impressions. But, you know, I've never been a, a huge specialized tarmac guy. You know, like I said in a previous video, I like what I like. Uh, and so far, the tarmac has never ticked the box or, or really appealed to me. Um, but this one intrigued me here uh, because the reports that I was getting back from some friends that are, are um, state champions um, in both mountain bike and road and crit and track, they said that this has been the best tarmac that he's ever ridden. Uh, he skipped the SL7 because he just didn't feel like that it was snappy and responsive enough. So I'm excited to get on here as a non-fanboy and give an honest feedback of being my first tarmac. And, uh, and obviously I can compare that to my factor and, you know, the uh, the recent sale that I made of my 2023 uh, Cervelo S5 and how I decided to kind of go the opposite end of the spectrum here, right? I ended up going from a full-on aero bike, right, like the S5, tested the fastest in the wind tunnel, supposed to be the fastest bike out there but part of the dilemma that i'm having is that yes it may be on paper right and it may be on the wind tunnel but when you bring a bike like that into real world conditions there's too many variables right then you also have a rider with its legs and turbulence and turbulent wind you know wind blowing from all over the place not in a controlled environment for me you know at, uh, at best you know we're talking we're splitting hairs here now between this bike the factors you know, uh, the Cannondales, the all arounder bikes, they're literally between four or five watt difference, you know, in the wind tunnel being tested compared to some of these very deep tubed, you know, aero bikes that weigh two, three pounds more than, than this setup here. So, and what I found was that, you know, I want a bike that's responsive, that's snappy, that's agile, that I can sprint to snap to close a quick gap uh, or, or do a quick bridge. I felt the aero bikes are definitely very good at what they do best, right? Long, steady, power, you know, not in a punchy position where you're constantly have to get out and, 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 and kick over that, that heavier frame or those deeper wheels. You know, and for me, I decided that after I sold the S5, which again was a phenomenal bike, um, it just wasn't what I was personally looking for uh, after coming off the Ostro. And then obviously I got the Ostro uh, after I, I came off my System 6 that 
I was looking for a bike that can kind of do it all. It can climb, you know, it can hold its own on the flats, you know, and again, because we're, we're so close now with the UCI regulations in terms of what the tubes and the depths can be, um, you know, we're, we're all kind of like right there at this point. And then it's going to come down to, all right, if we're within four or five watts, right, can you feel that? Maybe not, maybe over an individual time trial where, you know, you're out in the wind by yourself with no draft and you're just putting constant power down. But that's not what I do. That's not how I ride. So I decided that I want a bike that can do it all. Um, and I went the opposite end of the, end of the, end of the spectrum. Instead of having the Aero S5, I went with an all-arounder that is, is known to be you know, pretty aero for, for its weight. And it definitely punches above its belt, again, based on the data. Um, and I'm very curious to kind of see how this kind of works in my, my group rides here on Saturdays, which are typically averaging over 26 miles an hour uh, for 40 miles. So I'm very anxious to, uh, to get this underway here. I do have an appointment with my bike fitter next week so we can uh, take care of this very odd looking stack here. Now it does actually believe have the same stack as my Factor Ostro, but the Ostro hit it better apparently. Um, I'm running the same 35 mils on the Factor, but this just looks a lot more odd. So I definitely want to get that a little lower if I can, obviously basically getting comfortable. But I think I will be able to get a little bit more comfortable. This top tube here is nine millimeters shorter than the um, Factor. So I'm thinking, and I kept with the same 100 stem. And so I'm thinking if I have to make any uh, extended reach uh, to get very uh, comfortable, uh, I can at least go down uh, to get a little bit more reach opposed to... Uh, having to go with a longer handlebar. So I'm hoping I can get a little bit lower on this bike because the overall uh, reach and top tube is a little bit shorter. So I'm hoping I can, again, kind of get a little bit lower, a little bit more aero. I did go with a 40 centimeter bar here, so it is pretty narrow coming from my 42s. Um, and I really like the ergonomics of the, uh, the Shimano shifters here and how they kind of like, you know, kind of peel in a little bit here. So I'm very excited to kind of get on here. Again, stay tuned for the... Uh, the ride recap, I'm going to get out on this thing probably once or twice before the weekend just to get a spin and feel for it. Uh, but definitely very anxious to uh, to kind of see how it, it would hold its own. Um, this is my first bike that I've actually had, a, had a, a chain catcher on. And I only did it because I usually PPF this section around the bottom bracket in case I drop the chain. But because of the small bottom bracket size and the shape, I was not able to really get a good clean piece of paint protection film on there. Um, so I ended up just deciding to go with the chain, you can see the PPF there, chain catcher uh, to prevent any uh, chain, chain fall um, or chain dismount here and uh, cause a, a nick or a scratch on this white frame. So white is definitely beautiful, uh, but it's something that you want to keep clean. So it's going to show nicks and scratches and gouges a lot um, you know, more than a typical black or a darker colored frame here. So I went with, again, PPF. Which you can see here on the top tube, the entire down tube under and wraps up around to the sides, the sides and the intersection here of the fork. They didn't do anything here with the uh, seat stays. Uh, I may put a small strip there myself. I'm not sure yet. Um, they're kind of thin. And again, I just did the um, the chain stays. You can see here on the. Where can I pick it up at? It's right there. Get that little angle, there's a little shadow. But yeah, here we are, pretty excited. And uh, stay tuned, appreciate the, uh, the views and uh, stay tuned for the, uh, the rest of the uh, non-specialized fanboy uh, series here, thanks.